Good afternoon, everyone. It's David Schlotthauer here in the Home Weather Office with my first U.S. weather forecast because we're going to start doing more of these as we get closer to fall and winter time as we track winter storms. You know the whole drill like we did last year. But anyways, if you all are new to the YouTube channel, please consider subscribing, hitting the like button, and sharing this video with their family and friends on social media. And also, now as we get into this active weather period, be sure you check out my friends over at Prestige Weather Consulting. They do individual one-on-one -on -one weather consulting catered to your local area. For more information, you can find the link to their website in the description down below. And be sure to use my code DAVID for 50% off on your first month of purchase. So here's a look at your current weather conditions across the entire United States. And we got a pretty big disturbance moving across the upper Midwest, including four portions of Illinois into the Great Lakes of Michigan, as well as Lake Ontario, um, as well, including for Hudson Bay, bringing some inclement weather, some cooler weather across the region. And yeah, we got some strong thunder storms popping off across the um the carolinas including for virginia but don't worry we're gonna see another big weather pattern change coming towards the middle to the end of this work week where we could be seeing some big time severe weather breaking out so now let's take a look at the week ahead because there is a big weather disturbance going to be ejecting off of the four corners region into the high plains and we are Talking about another round of severe weather and probably not anything very little at all. We're probably looking at a big severe weather event that could unfold. So going forward here all the way through Tuesday, the weather pattern looks to be pretty good for the morning hours for tomorrow all the way through the September 19th time frame. But let's take a look here at what we have over the Oklahoma area over southern Kansas into northern Texas, we might have some strong thunderstorms really developing here. This is for the 19th through the 20th of September. Yeah, fall is right around the corner, but I guess our weather pattern is not really illustrating that very much. Let's go all the way into Wednesday afternoon through September the 20th, and then really by the time we go into Thursday is when things really can get out of control we got um high plains severe thunderstorms that could develop across the dakotas but mainly across oklahoma and northern texas uh, we can see um, some severe weather but especially by friday by the end of this week really where we're watching for strong thunderstorms and some of these storms could contain some large hail some gusty winds and the potential for tornadoes too so just keep that in mind that it's been a while since we had some big severe weather events, but this one is going to be kind of a little wake up call as we get into our second severe weather season of the year. Usually we have one in spring. That's the biggest one, right? So uh, March, April, and May, and then we take a break usually in the midsummer months, and then we get into, say, September, October, and even early November when we see a second peak that is or called the second season or what we call the Indian summer um, severe weather events that we call because you know if you think about Indian summer it's the second summer this is kind of like that but only with severe weather so Friday afternoon into Saturday more of this again uh, we have a low pressure center that's going to set up shop over Kansas and then we got a cold front that's going to be la uh, attached to that Got a little bit of a diffused warm front draped over northern Missouri into central Illinois. So yeah, this is going to be the system to kind of monitor in days to come on how this is go uh, going to all um, elute to. If we're going to see a true big event, I uh, will let you know. But that's a look at what the euro is showing over the next, say, as five to seven days as far as any chances of severe weather. Now we're going to kind of derail. Actually, you know what? We're going to look at the, um, the Storm Prediction Center. Let's go over to that. Because this is showing us our slight risk of severe weather. Yes, in central Oklahoma, southwestern Oklahoma, northern Texas here. Got a uh, level 2 out of 5 on the severe weather index scale. But this is not just your slight risk. This is a 15 sig 
for severe weather. This could include uh, maybe a tornado or two. More than likely driven by damaging winds and hail is what my bets are on this. So it's not like a ballistic outbreak where we're going to see violent tornadoes, violent large hail, violent winds, you know, that sort of thing. This is going to be up there, though. We're probably going to be looking at an enhanced risk of severe weather in days to come. I'm sure when we get into the day two time frame, maybe day one, might see that get upgraded to a level three out of five on the severe weather index scale. And it looks to be right now for your, um, this is for Tuesday through Wednesday, and then probably for Thursday and a Friday, and then Friday and a Saturday Probably going to have a multi-day threat here in the high plains, I'm afraid of. So back to Weather Bell we go, and we can see our temperatures. This is kind of showing you, is it going to be hot for your area? Is it going to be uh, cool? You all are wondering about that, okay? So going forward, you can see temperatures today were pretty warm, and you're going to feel the heat tomorrow in the high plains. We're looking at daytime highs in the upper 80s to lower 90s if you're in the deep south like Texas and Louisiana. Probably some lower 90s in the forecast. If you want to find any triple-digit heat, you might have to go near Tucson and Phoenix, Arizona, where your daytime highs might be eclipsing 100 degrees, but really overall, I mean, we could see hotter Septembers than this, right? This is not going to be all that bad. In Illinois, you're looking at temperatures there in the mid to upper 70s, so not too bad there either. Actually, quite mild for this time of the year. And then if you're across California, Nevada, and the Pacific Northwest, also not too bad. That Indian summer is right around the corner. Once we get our first offshore wind event, we get that drier air from the north to pen uh, penetrate into California. We will declare that as Indian summer, and it's summer that you have dry air the air is extremely dry it's a crisp fall feel outside you all probably know what i'm talking about here and you get really chilly overnight lows usually in the mid 40s is what we declare as indian summer with daytime highs usually in the low to mid 80s with very light to no wind so that fall crisp um heat we call it is what we call and refer to as indian summer now into tuesday Probably not so Indian summer-ish because the air is going to be kind of humid and it's going to kind of be sticky. So not really so much of that in the high plains in the deep south. But it's going to be warm. Look at Texas um, in the upper 90s to lower 100s. Probably going to continue that all the way through Wednesday. And yeah, probably warming up here for Illinois. Look at this. Maybe some mid-80s. Yeah, I have a friend up there uh, that runs Prestige Weather um, that's going to have temperatures in the mid-80s. So, yeah, make sure you drink plenty of water. Also, any of you that live in the Great Lakes, just keep that in mind. can be really warm uh, through the next few days. Actually, starting in Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday can be warm as we get that ridge that tries to build in. And then by uh, Thursday, you're going to have temperatures in the 90s, and it's still going to be quite warm in the Midwest, but that storm is coming in and it's going to keep temperatures on the rather cool side if you're in missouri if you're in northern uh portion there of arkansas and central oklahoma it can be pretty uh, mild you know versus the 90s or lower 100s that you could be dealing with so now your temperature anomaly forecast yes it's going to be a warm one um depending on where you're at not so much over the great lakes here and the upper midwest including for the ozarks and the southeast can have temperatures over the next couple of days that could range between one to three degrees or maybe even as much as seven degrees cooler than average so really not going to complain about the heat too much since you're going to have below average daytime highs and then across canada you're going to have above average temperatures so by days two and three that warm weather is going to be building southeastward so a, a, uh, eventually into the great lakes the upper midwest and the northern plains you're going to see a warm-up again i mean it's September. You can see these crazy temperature swings this time of the year. But look at this. California, Nevada, the Pacific Northwest, you're going to have temperatures 5 to 10 degrees below the long-term average. I mean, it's going to feel like fall over here with a chance of showers. So, I mean, yeah, we do need the rain. We do. The sooner we get it, the better off we are for the upcoming winter. Our water year, by the way, starts on October 1st. So, 
This is not going to go into our water year, but it's going to help um, if any moisture we get out of it. Might uh, they may put that into the October first outlook? So by the time we go into days five and seven, uh, you know temperatures are going to be above normal uh, across much of the Great Lakes and the Northern Plains, and that's going to continue. I'm afraid of through the next ten days. In fact. For central and southern Canada, like uh, if you are in, say, Manitoba, if you're in Saskatchewan, you could have temperatures 10 to 20 degrees above normal on a one-day average standpoint. And that's because, again, that ridge, we can see large-scale ridging once our beast of a storm moves out of the picture. And that will happen by the latter part of this week into the weekend, the first weekend of fall. So looking at the 500 millibar air chart here, we can see, uh, just take note um, that this is a trough. This is what we were showing on satellite imagery, right? This whole dip in the jet stream in the Ohio Valley over, uh, say, Michigan, and that's bringing in cooler weather further south. So like the southeast, going to see some relief in temperatures over the next, say, 10 or 12 to 24 hours as that trough moves on by. But once that moves through, we're going to see large-scale ridging. We have a trough that's going to develop across the west coast. We got southwesterly flow over the four corners here, and what that's going to allow is this ridge to really build in a kind of a split flow that is in place. We got a flow here. We got a jet over here, kind of like a little fish, only if we can put little fins back here. You all are probably laughing at me on that for that reasoning, right? So not much in the way of trophy like traffic over the Great Lakes. And that's going to mean some warmer weather is on the return. Yeah, get ready to sweat, people, if you're in the Midwest. All right, so day five, we got uh, that disturbance that's going to move into the region. And this might be our next area to watch for severe weather we got to watch this trough here any little guy that moves through here that has divergent flow aloft in the left exit region could uh, develop a surface flow that can create a lot of shear we might see another round of severe weather something that you all might want to get used to as we trickle deeper into the fall months while we're still technically in summer but this is the first day of fall on the 23rd of September, and it's going to feel a little bit like the crazy fall-like weather that you don't like to see very much. But get used to it. We're getting into winter slowly but surely. We're just over three months away from that to occur. Now, Dow to day 8 and 10. Sorry if I tongue twister there. Out to day 8 and 10, we got large-scale ridging that is going to be building on in across the northern U.S. So like the Dakotas, as well as southern portion there of uh, Canada, you're going to have large-scale ridging, building heights. 594, by the way, it's going to be really, really warm up there uh, with cutoff lows that kind of linger across the Chicago metro area into the deep south. It's going to keep temperatures from being excessively hot, but will bring in warmer weather. All right, let's take a look at the Climate Prediction Center outlook. I wanted to show you all this because, yes, the warm weather is coming yet again. You know, you guys haven't had much of a break yet, but actually you had a break, but now that break is going all away. So September to the 23rd through the 27th, so officially the first week of fall. It's not going to feel much of that if you're in Illinois, if you're in Indiana, Michigan, if you are in Wisconsin and Minnesota, you're likely to see temperatures that are above average. Now, if we look at Southern California, likely below average or leaning below. So it's not going to be too crazy there as far as your temperatures and then near average over Georgia. Now, our 8 to 14 day forecast, I mean, what's going on with this pattern? I mean, this is just unprecedented. Like, the entire east has been really warm. I mean, yes, you've been getting some cool shots of air, but there have been long periods that you haven't had much in the way of cold weather. It's just been warm, warm, warm. Yeah, that's just how it's been. And look at this. Up here, 70 to 80% chance of seeing above average temperatures, while across California and Nevada, you're going to likely see 
below average. Yeah, I mean, we've been been stubborn. We've been getting our way, haven't we now, uh, with these below average temperatures. Now, looking at the 6 to 10 day precipitation forecast, that's good. News to see above average chances for precipitation all the way from central Texas all the way up into the high plains into the Dakotas, which is nice to see. Even look at this towards Delaware, towards New Jersey, you're going to see a uh, above average chances of precipitation that's uh, 50 to 60 not only that uh, i guess we're copycatting the eastern seaboard i mean it's just i don't know what it is this year right we uh if you're in california if you're in the pacific northwest it's going to be above average you go over here to the northeast and the eastern seaboard it is also above average well the difference here is also much of the nation is However, though, the Four Corners and the Northern Rockies below average as well as the Great Lakes. So maybe slightly below average chances. Now, as you all know, I do not know what the Climate Prediction Center has done here. I don't know if you all notice it. Let me know in the comment section below if you have noticed an error that they have made. I'm not even going to describe it in this video. I want to see if you guys are listening and paying attention, right? So for the north, uh, for the Pacific Northwest, for Northern California, leaning above average chances to above average likely for Northern California, for much of the Midwest and the Eastern Seaboard, you're looking at leaning above, and then of course for the Great Lakes, leaning below average. But also over here, we are looking at leaning below average precipitation, but we're missing something. Again, let me know in the comments section below this video. Well, that is going to pretty much sum it up for today's video, folks. I hope you all like these videos. I hope you like the content and you enjoy the uh, videos that I create alongside with Prestige Weather. If you haven't checked out that website, there will be a link. Now, as we get into this active weather period, be sure you check out my friends over at Prestige Weather Consulting. They do individual one-on-one -on -one weather consulting catered to your local area. For more information, you can find the link to their website in the description down below. And be sure to use my code David for 50% off on your first month of purchase. Well, that's going to do it. Thank you all for watching. Share, like, and subscribe. And I'll be back with you more tomorrow with another weather forecast.